Welcome back here to a brand new week of racing at Los Lamitos Racecourse. I am your host here, Jose Contreras, for the Los Lamitos.com preview show alongside Mike Rona, the voice of Los Lamitos. Michael, how's your uh, Thursday afternoon going? It's going very well. I'm just uh, still trying to digest a very heavy lunch, an excellent lunch, but a rather heavy one with a, a bit of a southern flair. It was a very buttery uh, wild halibut, pistachio crusted. At, nice. Uh, an excellent restaurant near Los Alamitos called Shenandoah, which I, I'd never heard of until a week ago. But uh, lovely uh, back patio setting, and uh, the food's excellent, but it uh, it, it has uh, weighed me down a little bit, mate. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad you enjoyed your lunch. Uh, tell me the name of the restaurant again. I'm going to write it down. Shenandoah. It's on okay. Catella, just off Cerritos. Uh, they have a spectacular fried green tomatoes appetizer, real gourmet variety of okay. fried green tomatoes. So, uh, yeah, I was having a few things done with my car at a nearby mechanic, and we thought uh, we'd grab a spot of lunch while we were waiting for the car to be fixed and um, had received a strong push for this restaurant recently and uh, glad we gave it a go. Sounds good. Now it's on my list. I'm going uh, to have to make a pit stop here one of these days as I'm driving in uh, to Los Al. Let's recap what happened last week. We'll start with the big futurity, Train Station V. He had been close in some very, very big races. He finally gets that grade $1 million futurity win. Uh, he was impressive without a doubt. Oh, yes. Yes, we, we knew how dominant he was in the trials and yeah. how that was a serious chance of being replicated in the final, and so it proved to be. He just does need that little bit of luck for his path to stay open in those first few strides. But that was the case in the final. And as soon as it was the case in the final, the final was over. Yeah. You know, again, he wasn't the quickest out of the gate, but once he still kept this, once he still kept his path there, even though he wasn't the quickest out of the break, he has those five to 10, the fit to 10 strides. Those, he has such a big, uh, acceleration in those first early strides that once his path was there, the race was pretty much over. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's now pr probably pressing on to the 2 million futurity trials, uh, assuming he came out of last weekend's race in good order. And uh, it was quite touching to hear his father-in-law, Bruce Bell, who passed away just last week, uh, he had trained a Golden State Million Futurity winner back in the 1980s, as well as a couple of AQHA champions. A great career for uh, for Heath's father-in-law. The race, Train Station V, getting the Golden State Million Futurity. And we assume now he'll be pointed to those two million trials coming up in November. Uh, let's wrap up uh, a few of the things that happened last week here as far as the show got underway. Uh, nice selection by you in the nightcap. Uh, got a nice win there. Remind, remind me the name of the horse. Was lethally tempted in the there last is. race last Saturday. Yeah, did a yeah. good job down the outside to get up and score. Yeah, that, that outside trip proved to be the key because uh, the trip he needed every, every kind of a, every bit of the racing luck on the outside because that big favorite for Monty and Dunn Ranch might have been the best horse in the race given all the trouble and how well that runner finished. Yes, that was A.B. Seis Coronas, or Corazones, oh, Corazones. and uh, he, he had a blinking light on him going to the finish line, didn't he? Uh, I, think, I think that pretty much everybody's uh, got him jotted down for, uh, for next time out, which could well be in a trial to the uh, 2 million futurity. Um, yes. So, yeah, that, that performance was very, very good in defeat. But I heard your comments after the race on FanDuel TV, I thought you summed it up and probably caught a horse racing in general up uh, very succinctly when you simply said that it's a game of trips and uh, it, part of the strategy, part of the winning is anticipating who's going to get the best trip, not necessarily who's the best horse. Yes, because if that horse was not on the outside post, he would not have been my pick. Because we kind of anticipated that that was possibly the most likely scenario as far as trip goes, and it ended up coming true. So yeah, it's all about trips, especially in quarter horse racing, where you can, you know, any any kind of a minuscule error could cost you an entire race. I think uh, trying to predict trips more than anything in quarter horse racing, it's very very uh, important. Well, my pick for this week's preview show is a poster child for everything <laughs> that you've just been saying. 
<laughs> yes, this is a runner that we both followed. Uh, I think Christopher Wade has given out this horse maybe a couple. He has. Yes, show. he's mm-hmm. been he's been a regular <laughs> regular uh, uh, featured horse on the program. More often than not, not hitting the winner's circle, but he did it last time out. So let's talk about this selection for you. And it is going to be in race number 10. And I'll I'll share right off the bat that this is going to be our first head-to-head matchup selection on the previous show. We I also have a selection in this show. And I kind of played coy. I didn't want to release it until we record. So you don't know who my selection is. I'll tell you in a moment here. uh, Yeah, well, I think seven of the ten horses are on my watch list. It's a fantastic race, the town policy. And when you told me that you picked a horse in this race, I I had two guesses and I blanked. And you said, you got no more guesses I'm going to tell you on the show. I didn't know who it might be. It's it's a very open race, a fabulous race, as are the two preceding stakes races. The late pick three on Saturday night is phenomenal. It is. It is, and actually, I want to I want to just uh, glance at those fields and, and kind of look at that really uh, that pick three. So race number eight is going to be the Fall in Love again. Race number eight, sixteen thousand purse uh, overnight handicap. We got a, f- a very good field here of nine set to post, and the slight morning line choice is going to be um, remember her who's seven to two. But I think you're going to get every bit of the seven two if you like her. I, I think the money's going to be spread out in that race. Yeah, oh, excellent race. And uh, three-year-old fillies again feature in the ninth. And uh, these uh, these stakes races make for a Fair. fabulous card. And yes. uh, look how open all of these morning lines are. Uh, seven to two favorite in the eighth race. Uh-huh. Favorite in the ninth. Do I have that right, AJ Bourne running? AJ Bourne running at seven to two, I believe. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. So on the outside, Ed, Ed Burgard's been scratching his head over it. I mean, there's so many ways you can go. There's um, horses that are exiting stakes races and trials, and uh, really high quality uh, late pick three on Saturday night. Very excited about it. And then it's another very open morning line in the tenth race. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I kind of played coy. I said, Michael, I'll give you two guesses if you can guess my pick. If you can't, you're out, and I'll release it when we're recording. So at this point, you don't know my pick, but I do know your pick because I had to repair the replay for the show. So I know who your pick is. You're going with Terrific Phoenix, an old friend of this show. Chris Overweight has highlighted him. You, I believe you've highlighted him as well. But you're liking here the nine, uh, Terrific Phoenix. Yeah, I think this might be the first time I've dipped my toe into the okay. waters as far as picking him on the preview show. I know Chris has a few times. Look. Uh, I mentioned that seven of the ten of, are on my watch list, but rest assured that the number of notes, the length of my notes about this horse, is probably as long as the rest of the field <laughs> um, combined. <laughs> it's for terrific Phoenix going back to June of last year, right near the beginning of his career. So many things used, so many whirlwind finishes. So many eye-catching gallop outs, and he, he's just got tremendous ability. But we haven't seen much of him from outside post positions, and uh, that's what has drawn me toward him in this race. I like him with a chance out wide at 400 yards to get over the top of them late. Let's take a look at the most recent replay. And I, I, I remember trying to beat him this specific night, Michael, because of the post, I was like, he's going to draw the rail and he's going to have to kind of make up ground. Boy, was I wrong about him here because he kind of broke his usual so-so self. It was a little bit better break than we've seen before. But just that kick that he has, he turned it into turbo jets. Yeah, he began pretty well for him, for Terrific yes. Phoenix. And he's never going to be the first out of the gate, but he, he didn't throw it away at the start. And then it stayed open. The path on the inside, in fact, stayed very wide open for him. And you can see what he's capable of when he gets going into full stride. Um, And that's a 9.52 closing sectional. And if he can uh, replicate that with a clear path down the outside, uh, he's he's certainly up with these horses ability-wise. You've just got to hold your breath for the opening few seconds. 
Now you're getting nine to two. Who is the more like favorite here? It is the, the rail of three to one. Good wagon yeah. SA. Good wagon. Who was a beaten favorite last time out uh, in that trial that Marcelo ended up winning? Yeah. Yes, he was. And uh, I've, I've always liked this horse. He hasn't had a lot of luck. And it's a bit surprising. He's only won two of 11. You can see five minor placings. Um, but he's another horse that if it goes well for him early, uh, then, you know, he, he he can win and he might well win. Always a chance as a brilliant performer for Monte Rosa. We know what Pragmatic's capable of. Now, he's yeah. a horse... I have picked on this show, and uh, he uh, he can come with a with a barnstorming finish as well. Um, you know, you can make a case for almost every horse. I'm a sixty man was terrific yeah. in the PCQHRA Breeders Derby. Uh, Mahomes Magic, we've spoken of many times over the course of this season. Ridiculous that he hasn't won a race as a three year old. Uh, he's been there and thereabouts so often. And required first from the outside post, actually beat Terrific Phoenix in a trial uh, to the Governor's Cup Derby back in the summer. Um, when breaking from the outside post, he can be erratic. He can get to lugging all over the place, but, but he's a very talented horse. Is, is any of these that I've just mentioned your pick, Jose? <laughs> I think you didn't mention one or two of them, but thankfully you did. I'm going to an old friend of ours, Mahon's Magic. I, I, well, Mahon's okay. Magic. It's just, uh, he's been so unlucky to still not have a win that season. He's he's run about as good as you can while not winning a race. I mean, sometimes you you I've you know kind of felt bad for this horse because a few things have gone awfully wrong. Last time out, he broke slow, uh, he got bumped, and you know he wasn't able to make much of an impact. But I'm going to replay uh, the the race from uh, two starts ago. Uh, Mahomes Magic. This was a trial. For the PC Curator Eight Breeders Derby. Now, he this was a horrible stumble uh, from the outside post here. We're going to see the start from Mahomes Magic. Uh, he was the odds on favorite this night. I mean, this was about as bad as you you can stumble out of the gate. And the race was pretty much over for him, but somehow he still made it a race. I mean, he still finished a very nice second. He had no business running this wall after this kind of stumble. And you know what's unlucky? This was the last trial of the night, and the winner that beat him, Mornings with Maria, ended up qualifying. He missed out on the dance by that much. He was the he was the eleventh fastest qualifier. Yes. He it was just, the one who who just missed out on a spot in the final, and and clearly, yeah. given the start, you you know that he should have taken his place in the field. And uh, I remember in the preview show the week after that race. Tipping my hat to Mahomes Magic. I've done that a couple of times on this show, uh, just uh, giving him some kudos for uh, some of his performances uh, in minor placings. And uh, so I, I would never begrudge him a win. Um, but, uh, well, maybe I would because I'm picking terrific <laughs> things. But, but you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> You know, and and you're right. There's You can go up and down this field and make legitimate cases for many of these runners, and not only that, you're probably going to get a very fair price on whoever you want relatively the relative to the form. That's how good of a race this is to end the card. So uh, I'm going to give Mahomes Magic uh, another shot here tonight. And I in my nightline selections that I, I submitted already a few hours ago for the print edition, I went 7-9. So I did have Terrific Phoenix as my second choice. Uh, so I like seven nines. We might be able to just box this exactly there in the nightcap. Okay. Yep. That sounds good to me. I like yeah. the fact that you've got my horse up there uh, in your selections. Uh, so let's see how the race unfolds. The start will be critical for so many of these horses. It, it truly, it truly will be. Um, I think the, the, the race is a, a terrific way to end the Saturday card. Uh, looking ahead to Sunday, we'll, we will have the running of the Los Amigos be um and of course we had those trials uh three weeks ago with uh apocalypse uh ended up uh, the fastest qualifier as a big long shot upset upsetting um um political was a political rivalry and he's an enduring in that trial i believe so um but apocalypse uh, was the fastest qualifier 
Yes, and that's a horse for uh, Valeriano Racing yeah. Stables. They will also have Sicario V in the Super Derby Sunday night. Of course, uh, coming off the high of the win by train station V. In fact, we saw their trophy parked on the bar at Burgard's, didn't we, after <laughs> yes. the races on Sunday night? Yes, we got we got uh we, we met up at Burgard's after the races, kind of reminisce about the weekend and catch up. And the trophy made it onto the Burgard. So the trophy uh for the Golden State Military Journey was parked right on top uh the bar top there at Burgard's. So it was it was it was fun to see the connection celebrating after the races. Yeah. Um He's judge and jury might have been the horse that was beaten in the trial because political, yeah. right? Yes, yes. Um, I think I've got that right. Oh, no, but he's the two-year-old. You're uh, right. So yeah. it was it was a, um, a uh, polit I, I can't think of the name. It was a political horse, <laughs> but it was yeah. uh, he judge and jury finishing third. I don't know who was the second place finisher. It can't come to mind. You know what? We can find out in the PPs right here. All right, let's let's go ahead. No, can we? I think that is. I think the, the running line is someone in these horses here. All right. I'm not going to end the broadcast without confirming that name. Mike. All right. Do, do, do a little bit of research uh, before you wrap up the show. But yes. uh, the undefeated political horse is the two-year-old who won the PCQHRA Breeders' Futurity, right? Party politics. Party politics. There is. Oh, party politics, yes. yes, yes. Party politics was the horse. So it was Apocalypse uh, V, fastest qualifier, party politics, then Jericho, and then he's judging jury the top four qualifiers uh, as far as time goes for the Super Derby on Sunday. Okay, well, we'll eagerly await the post-position draw for that huge race on Sunday night. All right, uh, Michael, thank you so much for that selection. We're, it's our first time ever he going heads up in the same race. If it's not you, I hope it's me. And vice versa, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, have a good uh, rest of your Thursday. I'll see you this weekend at Losal. Good on you. Hooroo. The Los Alamitos traditional pick six continues to rise. On July 2nd, a carryover of nearly $15,000 led to a total pool of over $150,000. On July 9th, a carryover of $15,000 led to a total pool of nearly $160,000. Plus, with no jackpot provisions, the Los Alamitos pick six can pay big time every time. And if we don't have a carryover going into Sunday night, we'll add 10 grand to the pool. That's right. The fast rising Los Alamitos pick six is one of the country's best. Welcome back. Uh, now joined by your Los Alamitos analyst, uh, Christopher Wade there from the paddock each and every race on every racing night from Los Alamitos. Uh, the pick six is a challenging sequence on Saturday with those uh, very good fields to end the card. So I'm liking that you're going to take us to a potential race where there could be a standout for you. And it's going to be race number six. Race number six, uh, allowance event, Chris. You like the rail horse, a, a fabulous, fabulous miracle. Yeah, this is a horse uh, that uh, is trouble prone. He had a good amount of trouble in his prior race in uh, July at Rio Dosa. And King of the Los Alamitos there for Christopher O'Dell and uh, was favored, I think it was, in that affair. And just broke slow, got bumped back. It was crossed. It was locked and loaded behind horses with nowhere to go. And he very well could have won that race. Anything close to a decent start. And he seemingly always improves second time over the oval. And with the rail draw, he figures to have a clear path to run. So we'll give him a big look there in the sixth event. This is about as uh, as much trouble as you can encounter, right, in a, in a field, in a compact field in between horses. We'll take a look at this replay here for uh, A Fabulous Miracle. This was back on October 14th. Yeah. And uh, she had gate six. So gate six in this field of seven. Talk us uh, through this trip. Yeah, she's always got a little rambunctious inside the gate. And uh Broke slow with bump back and close quarters and cross. Lost a couple of lanes, was slow in the stride. And uh, she was locked and loaded behind horses, and uh, she she was loaded. If she was had anything close to a clear path, even despite that troubled start, she probably could have won. Broke slow, bump back, and cross. Lost a couple of lengths away from the gate. And uh, still makes a nice run midway in close quarters once again. And then just when she started to level out, uh, had to take up near the wire when the three came out and the seven came kind of in near the wire. So a good amount of trouble. Getting close to a decent getaway puts in the winner's circle. Now she was the betting favorite this night. So um, she is the second choice on the morning line on uh, Saturday night for race number six is allowance for 300 yards. Now expensive and mass mandate for Jose Flores, both were flashy debut winners. So both should still take support uh, and both coming off the layoff. So you, I think you might be able to get a, a better price 
tonight on a family's miracle than it was last time out. Yeah, I'm certainly hoping so because, like, expensive uh, did run so so much better than looked in the last affair. Had a good amount of trouble. Should have won that event, and of course, mass mandate uh, was close up too. So, of course, has a look at the outcome with a decent getaway. But uh, I'm gonna give Fabulous Miracle second time over the track. The rail draw with a hopefully a clean trip expected. Give that worth a slight edge in that uh, six event. There is our uh, preview show selection. Yeah, she and you can tell she was favored last time out and. That was only her first start, uh, luckily, at Los Alamos. And we've seen, even this season, Chris, that the second time out is, is still a, a pretty good angle for some of these uh, invaders from New Mexico. Yeah, second time out, second time off the 78-night uh, layoff. So definitely have to look at the outcome with any close addition getaway for a hot connection to Christopher Dale and company. Now, um, it is only a field of six. If if you had to pick from one of the two Jose Flores, who who – who scares you the most, the two or the three? Oh, that's a tough question. But uh, I'm going to have to give a slight look to expensive. This horse is coming off the layoff and a nice prep down the, down the, down the straightaway to work at this horse for you to rumble off the layoff. And the connections are very good off rest of runner. So this horse uh, should have won that last affair and uh, earned a very good figure. But the thing factored in. Let me give horse a slight edge as our second choice over mass mandate in that affair. And also – it's interesting. It's interesting that seeing that Cruz Mendes ends up on that one instead of Mass Mandate, and Cruz Mendes is usually the main go-to rider for this barn. So that might be telling us something as well. There, following the rider, Cruz yep. Mendes. All right, Chris. Uh, best of luck with that selection. That fabulous miracle. It's going to be a a busy night with those team races and those very good fields to end the program. And of course, we do have the Breeders' Cup across town at Santa Anita as well. So uh, our racing in Los Alamitos will pick up soon after Sania wraps up uh, their. Um, Breeders the Breeders' Cup, both uh, Friday and Saturday, most will be Saturday because we are racing on Saturday after they wrap up. So that's going to be a fun weekend of racing. And hopefully, uh, I'm suspecting there's plenty of hardcore horse players, Chris. I know a few already, a handful, that are going to make the Los Al Santa Anita double uh, this weekend. So uh, sure we'll, have, sure. we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have people driving over from Santa Anita to Los Al. Yeah, we got a uh, shout out to the racing. Uh, Racing department. This is an absolutely incredible card with the quarter horses. You got three oh, yeah. stakes races and nice size field, and uh, you got a lot of trouble prone runners. I don't have. I got so many W's on this program. <laughs> yes, horses to watch. It's incredible. It is. I mean, this the late pick four in itself is challenging, but you add the the other two legs for the pick six. This pick six could carry. I mean, this pick six could could either be a pull shot. Somebody's going to win it for themselves, or it could carry. It's that difficult. I think yeah. there's a, a few vulnerable favorites along the way as well. Yeah, it is a tough, tough, one more time, tough card on Saturday night. So uh, don't leave out that horse on the pick four, the pick six, because it's a tough ticket. Yes, it is. So it's going to be fun. Fun handicapping challenge for all the horse horse players this weekend. Also, let me just shout out to our racing office for putting it all together. All right, Chris, as far as uh, some kind of signals, uh, what are you tackling this weekend? Well, Albuquerque's uh, closing night was last weekend, so no Albuquerque, but we're going to be uh, carrying uh, the last four at Evangeline Downs, races five through uh, through eight, then, of course, races three through 11 at Lone Star Park. We've got some video horses at Lone Star Park coming up, so uh, take a look at our selections there on the website and or in the racing racing program in the back. Now, remind me, did Lone Star have their Texas Classic Tree last week or two weeks ago? Because the finals have, is approaching soon. It should be, right? Yes. I'm not really because, sure. With, with the, they had some big, big races last weekend. Yeah, so uh, the trials for that takes – excuse me, the trials were already contested, so the finals should be coming up uh, maybe next week or the week after that. So, That's all right, Chris, best of luck with everything and all your selections this weekend. Uh, looking forward to a great card on Saturday. I'll see you out there. All right, boss. You have a good night. Team Horse Racing. Live Performances. Culinary Masterpieces. Join the National Thoroughbred League for its inaugural season. Experience horse racing like never before. With music, food, and fashion. This is one event you don't want to miss. Come experience the NTL. November 11th at Los Alamitos Racetrack. Welcome back. Now joined by Orlando, Orlando Gutierrez, Professor G, our Director of Mar Marketing and Publicity at Los Alamitos. Professor, first of all, have you seen, seen, you, seen you in a while here on the show? 
Uh, but thank you for everything you're doing behind the scenes, grabbing videos, interviews, and all that. Uh, how are you doing here on this Thursday? I'm doing really good, Jose. Uh, we just finished the draw for the Los Alamitos Super Derby. I know we're going to be talking about that, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to join the show uh, and just talk a little bit about what's going to happen next Saturday here at Los Alamitos. I figured that it'd be a perfect time to touch base with you. I see you all the time, of course, here on track. Uh, we just had the Halloween carnival a few weeks yes. ago. That was a lot of fun. But, of course, wanted to come in and uh, say hello to uh, the viewers. Uh, we have a lot of loyal viewers all around the country, so wanted to say hi. And, uh, and again, just be part of the fun here on the uh, preview show. Yes, uh, we just uh, saw that uh, that advertisement there for the National Thoroughbred League. I know you catch up with it, catch up with that group. Uh, what's uh, what's going on? What's up next? Well, it's going to happen on Saturday, November 11th here on Los Alamitos. And it's going to be a fun mix of horse racing, music, fun, and a lot of food in the Vessels Club. Uh, there's going to be a special event up there, a VIP event. There's tickets available for sale right now at ntl.racing. NTL and the featured race uh, for the NTL is a sponsored event by the NTL, a $50,000 allowance, open allowance at 1,000 yards. So that will be part of the Saturday night festivities on November 11th. So this is happening next Saturday. Uh, we're going to have a concert uh, featuring Tyler Rich. Uh, mm -hmm. You can learn more about him at Tyler Rich Music, and that is on Instagram. He's got a nice following there. A goal recording artist that's going to happen prior to the first race on the card on Saturday, November 11th. That's coming up next. That's coming up soon uh, next week here as we begin uh, the, the November calendar. So NTL, their next uh, race up scheduled uh, here at Los Alamitos. It's going to be a, a fun event here coming up soon. Yeah, and that's going to happen uh, again next Saturday from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. That will be the concert time followed by the 1,000-yard race at 1,000 yards. Uh, $50,000 up for grabs is an open allowance event here at Los Alamitos. I believe it's going to be race number one. So right off the bat, a $50,000 race on Saturday, the 11th. And of course, we'll continue with our normal racing program throughout the night. So again, that's going to happen next Saturday, November 11th. And a good fun night here with a concert before the races, uh, the $50,000, 1,000-yard race, and of course, all the great action that you're accustomed to here at Los Al. Visit ntl.com, ntl.racing.com there for all the info there. Uh, what's coming up at Los Amigos next uh, next Saturday here? All right, let's talk about Sunday card. Uh, we previewed, uh, you know, Michael and I previewed a uh, recap what happened last last night, uh, last weekend with the Golden San Miguel Fraternity Train Station B. Uh, what's coming up uh, Sunday here at Los Al? Well, of course, we're talking about the Los Alamitos Super Derby about a $900,000 on the line in a tremendous field. Right there is the post position order has already been drawn. And there is the field right there, Jose. An outstanding field. Uh, Rainbow Derby winner Sicario V has drawn the rail right next to Ghost with a Fire, a horse that uh, did really well here at Los Al, ran in the uh, Los Alamitos Winter Derby, ran a solid, I believe, fourth place in the trials. Uh, Navaja, who's a uh, uh, qualifier in grade one races, mm -hmm. qualified to the Edberg Million last year. Fearless Moon was part of the All-American Oaks, an outstanding uh, filly. I think she's going to be one of the top mares here at Los Alamitos next season. Now tackling the boys here in this race, uh, Fearless Moon from the outstanding breeding of uh, Gentry Farms. We've seen a lot of great horses, uh, a lot of great fillies and mares from uh, Gentry Farms. He's chickless, winner, winner of the El Primero del Año Derby, gets post number five. Jericho, post six, and he, in my opinion, was among the most impressive runners yeah. on trial night, Jose. Uh, the fastest qualifier, however, the one horse here featured in this photo, Apocalypsis V, at the fastest time, a big, big upset in a very tough trial at about 50 to one, uh, post of that time. And look at that face. Reminds me a little bit of that great horse, Freaky. Mm -hmm. uh, number eight, he's Judge and Jury, a champion, winner of the All-American Futurity last year. Qualified to the $2 million last year here at Los Al. Qualifies to the Super Derby here this Sunday night. Uh, number nine, Party Politics. Multiple grade one winner here uh, at Los Al, looking for a big derby win now in 2023. And rounding out the field, the Governor's Cup Derby winner, future version. 
So a uh, derby winner from post one, a derby winner post number 10, and a lot of great ones standouts right in between. What a great race. It's going to be a great race for sure. And what I find interesting here, now that we got the post vision draw, Professor, is that Apocalypse V ended up defeating party politics and he judged during that trial, and they draw side by side by side. Look at them, the three that come out of that trial, one, two, three, they run gate six, uh, gate seven, eight, and nine. Should be a fun one. Absolutely, Jose. And of course, uh, Francisco Calderon, who won the Golden State Million Futurity uh, last week, gets Sicario V. He's going to be on board Sicario V. And he rode Apocalypse V in that trial. Mm -hmm. So that mount now goes to Eduardo Nicasio. Not a bad money rider, right, to uh, take over mm -hmm. that mount. No, for sure. One of the all-time greats here, Eduardo Nicasio, picking up the mount on Apocalypse V. And not only is that interesting, Professor, but it also tells us, uh, kind of remind us, when do you remember the last time that the rider jumped off the fastest qualifier? I have, I have a feeling that, uh, uh, did, we, did you ask me this question? I, I have a feeling Maybe. you've asked me this question before. Maybe. I, I can't remember. It doesn't happen too often, right? No. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you can't really fault Francisco Calderon because you're going with a horse that has qualified to so many grade one futurities in, uh, in derbies as well. Won the rainbow, was in the All-American Derby. Last year ran second in the All-American Futurity to his judge and jury. Meanwhile, Apocalypse B came out of nowhere with a huge effort. Uh, so can't blame uh, Francisco Calderon going with the proven great one performer in Sicario V. Great opportunity for uh, an outstanding jockey in Eduardo Nicasio to pick up that mount. Uh, he's going to be what? Is he right next to uh, his brother, Jose Nicasio, who's riding Jericho? Let's see. It is. So the brothers are side by side. Jericho in gate six with Jose Nicasio and Apocalypse V in gate seven with Eduardo Nicasio. What do you think of uh, party politics drawing that nine post position? His issue is always just trying to break fast, right? He's usually gets into, mm -hmm. sometimes he gets into a little bit of trouble leaving the gate. He's usually not the fastest out of the gate, at least this season he hasn't been. Last year, remember, he won the Golden State Million Futurity with a flying finish to catch mm -hmm. Cyber Attack. So we know that he's got that big kick, and if, and he did it from an outside post, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he actually did it from the way outside, if I remember correctly. So drawn on the outside, I think party policy is a positive. You're right. The gate hasn't been the most consistent for him, but obviously he's he's already a, a grade one caliber runner. So uh, I think he's drawn well. I, I think this is a very good, very good final assembled. Uh, I'm with you visually, just off the top of my head. Jericho looked uh, visually as impressive as anyone that night. Yeah, he hasn't won the big one here at Los Al, but uh, he was in the Golden State Million last year. He was in the $2 million this year, now gets to the Super Derby. We've seen him perform with some huge races in trials, and that happens sometimes, right? We see these horses that just have huge trial races and uh, have come up short in the final. Let's see, it's the third time in a great one race here at Los Al, Jericho can get it done. I think he. Uh, I yeah. think he's gonna be right there. Uh, him and party politics. Uh, we'll see how the Sicario V gets treated from post number one. Uh, but you know, you always like being right there in the middle, especially with all those big horses in there. And uh, I'm sure Juan Alaman has to like that post position for number nine party politics. The ten future version is one horse that I, I think still has room to improve. Ran a big race on Governor's Cup night. Uh, run a nice trial race to get into this really good race because it was a, a, a loaded field in the trials. Now gets that outside post, uh, number 10. Let's see if he surprises. And the one that, ha that, that can show super fast speed is his checklist. When yeah. he's on his game, he can fly. He, that is his main weapon, his skate speed. That is that is his main uh, his main positive uh, habit there for his checklist. So all in all, it should be a very good renewal of the Los Amigos Super Derby this upcoming Sunday. Not only is a Super Derby, uh, obviously a great resume wanting race, but in that, Professor, also holds a presumpting birth to the champion of champions, correct? Yeah, the winner of this race uh, gets a, a presumptive birth to the champion of champions. Jose, uh, we just, just with some news that happened this week. Uh, the winner of the Bank of America Challenge Championship, uh, Trestle Beagle, 
right? Uh, it will be coming for the champion of champions, so you can add nice. into the field. Perfect. That's uh, the champion of champions field that's taking shape, Professor. Can't wait. Uh, we're already talking about November. Uh, December won't be too too far along. Professor, remind for the for the horse players that are wanting to check out also the British Cup festivities at Los Lomitos on site. Uh, remind us of the opening hours for the Los Lomitos. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of phone calls today already. People wanting to know what time do we open on on Friday? What time do we open on Saturday? Well, tomorrow all gates open at 9 a.m. Uh, general yeah. admission is three dollars. We have free general parking. Burgars and vessels ten dollar admission on Saturday. Uh, it's 8 a.m. Everything opens at 8 a.m. Same deal, $3 grandstand, $10 burgars or vessels. But I do uh, I, I do suggest that you call for reservations in the Vessels Club to secure the best table possible. 714-820-2681 for the Vessels Club reservation. Uh, we got we got tables. Uh, no problems with that. Just make sure that we, we want to get you your, the best table possible. Call 714-820-2681 for a great day. So once again, 9 a.m. Uh, on Friday morning, 8 a.m. on Saturday morning here at Los Santos. And if you're visiting us on track at Los Alamitos, why not stop by the gift shop here? Here's a recent tweet by Los Alamitos Racing. Look at that. I'm wearing my Los Ponies hat. I need to get a fresh updated uh, Los Alamitos hat. But look at this. Uh, we got a $25 hats there going on at the gift shop. Yeah, and, and the trainers have to come and get some because I mean I see I see the Juan Aleman colors right there. Yes, right and there. I also the, see the, the Elena Andrade colors. Yes. And I know Sergio Morfin has that little teal looking there. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Jaime Gomez may be up there as well. And who's mm -hmm. Maroon? Uh, a Rancho El Cabresto, you know. So yeah. hey, you know, if you're an owner, I'm sure we got the colors to fit your racing uh scheme, your colors uh here in the gift shop. That's that's a uh, uh one-on-one -on -one marketing right there you, you i knew there was some something behind these color combinations i just knew it i had, I had an inkling that these these color combos uh were due to something so if you come out to los lomitos uh gift shop there uh, it is open during the nighttime racing so come out and visit us and stop at the gift shop uh there's plenty of people professor uh during our los lomitos equine show that raved about the gift shop so great job to our team at the gift shop uh, uh, the merch was flying off the shelves during uh, during the Los Angeles Equine sale. So kudos to that. Absolutely, I, I walked by a few times, and uh, that was one of the places to be that that uh, yes. Sunday night. Especially, it was just packed. It, it, yeah, it was like kind of Black Friday early for for yeah. our horse players. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, you know we have a lot of people that travel from uh, out of state. A great opportunity to pick up some uh, early Christmas presents, like you mentioned. Uh, nice place to stop by and get some nice logo wear for the winter and time. Winter's coming here at Los Al, and of course, they go back to places like Idaho, Idaho, Utah, Montana. Perfect time to wear your hoodie, your sweatshirt with the Los Al logo right there, especially if you're running horses here at Los Al. For sure. Next up on my wish list is going to be a vest. So I'm going to go down to the Los Alamitos vest, uh, Little Miss Gift Shop, and give me a new updated vest there. Uh, for the upcoming winter uh, months. Professor, uh, good to catch up with you. Thank you for checking in about the National Derby League as well and what's to come at Los Alamitos. Uh, anything else for the VM public? No, if you want to sit right there by the stage, uh, tickets are only $16. There's also a QR code that will be featured in our Nightlines program. Find out how you can get some free tickets for that nice concert. Again, that's next Saturday. All right. Uh, thanks so much for all the info, Professor. Good uh, good to have you here on site. So uh, good to see you on this Thursday. Have a good rest of your day. And uh, we'll see you this weekend. Los Alamitos. Thanks so much, Jose. Uh, thank you for the viewers that continue to support not only our live program, but also this show. We love putting it together for, for everyone out there. I know Jose, Michael, Chris, great job that you guys do every single week giving winners i mean is there a i don't think there's been a show where one of you guys has not given at least one winner out so keep you it just up, guys. jinx us you just jinx us professor thank you for that you just think i and professor for i think for the first time ever uh me and michael are going head to head on the same race this is so, so this week's show me and michael first time ever head to head we'll see if we can we can come up with a winner there all right chris let's do it chris <laughs> Hi, Professor. Thank you for joining us. Have a good rest of your Thursday. Uh, uh, we'll see you this week in Alice Thanks so much.
and past the gap. Train Station V heads off AB Wow, then Unrelentless. The rest are in the caboose. Train Station V is doing the locomotion. Wins by more than two lengths from Unrelentless. And it's... I mean, it, it's awesome to own him, you know, he's, he just doesn't break that good, but he's, he's fast. Team Horse Racing. Live performances. Culinary masterpieces. Join the National Thoroughbred League for its inaugural season. Experience horse racing like never before with music, food, and fashion. This is one event you don't want to miss. Come experience the NTL November 11th at Los Alamitos Racetrack. The Los Alamitos traditional pick six continues to rise. On July 2nd, a carryover of nearly $15,000 led to a total pool of over $150,000. On July 9th, a carryover of $15,000 led to a total pool of nearly $160,000. Plus, with no jackpot provisions, the Los Alamitos pick six can pay big time every time. And if we don't have a carryover going into Sunday night, we'll add 10 grand to the pool. That's right, the fast-rising Los Alamitos pick six is one of the country's best.